Hello to all the learners. Good evening and myself Dr. Roini Wayan and here I am on an academy platform with the subject anatomy and today we are going to do more of image-based learning. So here we have image-based image-based learning. So this is probably the 12th one because we have covered so many of them. More than 10 we have covered on YouTube. We have more and more sessions happening on the special classes as well. So I would urge all of you to join my special classes. We have a lot of things going on even in the special classes. So here on YouTube, you have image-based learning and many, many more things are like mnemonics based and uh, their picture based, flashcard based, all these sessions are happening in the special classes. So please go ahead and download the app and also attend those special classes. And to attend those special classes, you definitely need a unlock code. These unlock codes are very important because without the code, you will not be able to access. So if you are a first time learner, you definitely need the unlock code. And this is my code ROHINI10. So when you use this code, you will be able to access all those things that are from my side, like the quizzes, tests, and many, many things you can access. So you can also access other educators, whatever they have put up for you on an academy, um, you know, um, telegram channel, you can access, you can access all those free classes with the quizzes, test series, etc. So that's why you need this unlock code. So please don't forget the code. All right. So here we have some of the credentials that you can see. So here I have uh, my credential, which I have from AMC Mangalore, and this is located in Karnataka. And I have been living in uh, uh, Mangalore for many, many years. Only then I have moved out of the Mangalore and I was in USA for some time. That is where I acquired my MT and MBA from Georgia, USA. And recently when I'm back to India, I have got this PhD degree from Savita University. So that is located at Chennai, Tamil Nadu. All right. So this is my credential. And with all these things, I was even able to work in the USA for the hospital, Rockingham Memorial Hospital that is located in Harrisonburg, Virginia. So that was more of administrative medical officer job. So that was not of a particular physician job. So now here I'm back to my loop. All right, so now let's go with the first one. Let's see what we have here. Here we have in this particular topic, we have more of genetics and we have also embryology and also the gross anatomy. Because this is how your mind should work. You should be able to think in a quick manner. You should be able to switch from one question to another question. Now here we are talking only about the different components of anatomy. But in the actual exam, it will not be so. You will be having a question from anatomy. Next question would be completely different. So you should be at a fast pace to switch from one thing to another thing. So how quickly you can switch, let's see. That's why I always believe in having a mixed MCQ or mixed image-based questions. All right, so that makes you even more smarter. So here you have Turner's syndrome. Okay, Turner's syndrome. So this is a kind of, there is something called super female. This is not a super female. Okay, this is one step less than being a female. So what is wrong here? There is a missing X chromosome. Okay, in Klinefelter syndrome, what happens? There is an extra chromosome, extra X chromosome. So it will be double XO or three times XO. So this is client filters, okay? But here what has happened, in the same pair of chromosome, you have one X missing, and that is known as Turner syndrome. One of the important feature of the Turner syndrome is webbed neck. So the moment you see the webbed neck, you should be able to identify that this is the case of Turner syndrome, okay? Other than that, what are the other symptoms that you can see? You can see, all these 
symptoms where you can relate it to the real picture. You can see that first of all the person is of a short stature. He's not tall, he's very short. She is very short and then there is a low hairline that you can notice and the thorax is like a shield. It is broad and shield type. It is not having a proper shape. So it is shield type and the nipples are widely spaced and you can also see the meta carpals. They are all short. They are all shortened. Shortened palm. And you can also see those nails are very short. And these brown spots you may you know, see all over the body here and there you may see the brown spots. So that is not very, um, it's called nevus. It is not very much visible in some of the cases. And other characteristic facial features, what you can notice is fold of skin on the sides of the neck. That is called the web neck. So here is the web neck. Then you can see there is no secondary sexual characteristics developed like the breast is not developed. All those ovaries, gonads, everything is rudimentary and also there is no menstruation. So remember all these things, whichever is actually going to complement the female is not present. So that's why there is a indication that there is a missing X chromosome on the 23rd pair. All right, so you should remember this that is about the Turner syndrome. The opposite you can see in the clan filters. I told you there is an extra X chromosome. So immediately you should always try to relate the things. Only then you can remember the things very well. So in anatomy, there is a high chance that you will forget because it's a very volatile subject. So if you want to remember the things, then this is the method. You have to learn something and you should try to remember Something that is very similar but in the opposite. So if it is right, then what is left? You have to think in that way. All right, next one. This gives you some more information on the Turner syndrome. So now here, instead of the individual or the female being 46 XS, he is 45 XO. So remember, this is the genotype is normal. And in the, the instead, you have 45 XO. That means there is only single X, not two X. So one is missing here. There is a reason for this. That is meiotic disjunction. Okay. So remember what is the cause for this Turner syndrome? There is a meiotic disjunction. And that is often the cause for this chromosomal loss. Okay. Whenever the meiosis takes place, there is one X that is not carried to the next stage and it is missing from the loop. So it can be mosaic where not all cells have lost the X chromosome. There could be only few of them which have lost it. All right, let's move to the next one and see. We have some important information to give you. That is about those telegram channel that we have. That is let's crack neat PG. So here we have a telegram channel. You can join this telegram channel and you can access many things. You can access to all those PDF. So watch all these PDF notes and you can download them by joining into this telegram group. So this is a very important feature of an academy where the students are highly benefited. And here we have two types of classes. One is iconic where you have the unacademy plus the prep ladder. And there is also plus classes where you have unacademy educators teaching you. So all this is very structured and also unlimited access you have to all those PDF classes, live classes and many tests, etc. So everything is unlimited. So you can imagine how lucky you can be with, you know, an academy subscription. So there is personal guidance given and also a lot of expert advice given. All this is for you to be very close to your goal. And there is test analysis and also study material is given, especially if you go with the 12 month subscription, you will get the hard copy of the study material itself. So that is some people are very used to studying from the hard copy. They're not very much into the soft copy. So that is for those people. If you go with 12 month subscription, you get everything in a hard copy manner. All right. So here we have next one. 
if you have doubts you can always clarify it you can just clip that and send it to your educator the educator will solve your queries that is you know then and there so it is that quick so you can ask the doubts and then you can clarify it and then here are some of my special classes there was um 7 a.m class and 8 a.m class and similarly you have in the next week as well you have lot of things planned all right so every wednesday so this was the last wednesday and every wednesday so you can expect special classes so what is so special about these special classes these special classes are very very interactive so all the people they look forward to special classes because they are interactive and it is more you know student oriented so you will not feel like you have just lost in some big question. You feel that you are so connected to your educator and your educator is talking to you and it feels like an offline class more than an online class. And there is poll feature that is used. There is a feature called the raise a hand and you never miss a class because always notifications are sent prior to the class and even a day before the class. And all the lecture notes are available in the PDF form. So you will get everything soon after the class. So you have the lecture notes and you will attend the classes. So you are going to get this revise and recite so many times, especially what is needed for anatomy, you will get it all. Okay, then you can access all this anytime, anywhere. So that is the beauty of special classes. But that is not there in YouTube because you will have to search in the search bar. So you want to know about some class, then you have to lie, go look for the link and then try to watch it, then save the link somewhere, but that is not so here. Once you are registered with us using the code ROHINI10, you are good to go. You are always there with an academy and you will be getting all these benefits. And then you, when you think of subscription, you can definitely go follow these steps. You can go and see what exactly is your goal, whether it's NEET PG, FMG or what it is. And then you can go through the steps that is given. And ultimately, you can decide how many months subscription you want and then go ahead for the payment options. And when you want to install the Google Play uh, or App Store is there for you, you can install the Unacademy Learners app. So with this app, you will be able to access the special classes. So first install this, then go with the unlock code. What is the unlock code? It is ROHINI10. So please use this if you are a new user. This is Bugs Bounty. When you feel something is inappropriate, you can definitely, you know, uh, talk about the content of the video. There is a subscribe, like and share option. Please do so. Please follow me on my profile so that I can, you know, connect with you more so that I can put up more notes for you. And also I can have more interaction with you in the special classes. So once you follow, you get notification for all my classes. You are not going to miss a class from my side. So that is one thing and you also get the PDF notes at the end of the class. So that is all the notes are really, really handpicked and every information is there. So it is going to be really helpful for you. And there is this code, ROINI10, that is called the referral code or the unlock code. You can not only access the free things, but you can also go with the subscription. You get a discount that is 10% off you get. When you go with the subscription, what subscriptions we have? We have the plus and also the iconic. So all these are complete curriculum based. So you can complete your curriculum with an academy. So you have this plus subscription where you have access to question banks and many, many things. And like the study device can be just your desktop, laptop or even your mobile phones. And you also have iconic subscription and then the batches starts on 18th year and there is one month package also available. And you can see that there are many, you know, effective QBank high yield clinical questions available. And there is also 12 plus 2 
subscription where two months is completely free and there is four year subscription for those who are going with the you know starting the ug and want to study properly thoroughly for four years and then take up the pg so this is for them which is just 60000 or plus and 75 for the iconic there is a emi option for those who want to pay in monthly installments and you have no cost EMI that is available for six months minimum subscription. So you have, for example, 48 months, you have to pay just 1250 per month. So that is as low as that. So it is not a big uh, amount. So you can definitely manage it. But, you know, you have to decide whether you want to go with the EMI or you just want to pay it up front. So both are good. And then this is the code that you need to use whatever your decision is, R-O-H-I-N-I-10. And here are some grand test series that is already planned and everything is done for you. Only thing that you, we need you to do is just subscribe and start taking the test and start attending the classes. Okay, here is the next one slide. We have the femoral triangle here. Do you recognize this is a femoral triangle? It is male because you can see the spermatic cord, you can see the inguinal ligament. This, what is this opening? This is called the superficial one. The deep is above. This is called the superficial inguinal canal. All right. So this is the spermatic cord, which is a content. And you can also see beyond the inguinal ligament, the external iliac is called the femoral artery. So you have various structures. I can remember them in the, in the you know, mnemonic navel. So N-A-V-E-L it starts from the lateral to medial. So lateral to medial, if you talk about, you have nerve, the first one, then comes the artery, then vein, empty space, then comes some lymph nodes. So all these are the structures present in the femoral triangle. Now what is the boundary of the femoral triangle? The femoral Triangle has this boundary. You have sartorius. You should remember there is a medial border of sartorius and a lateral border. So this is the medial border of sartorius and also the medial border of adductor longus. Which one is medial border? This is the lateral border. You have this as the medial border. So what does that indicate? The adductor is inside the triangle. Adductor longus is inside the triangle, right? Because this is the medial border. If it was this border, lateral border, it would have been outside the triangle. Now it is inside the triangle. So it also forms floor of the femoral triangle. So remember this, it also forms floor of the femoral triangle. And one more interesting thing about adductor longus is, this is the muscle that can get pulled in case of hyper abduction, abduction, that is called rider strain. Rider strain. Okay. So that is the muzzle that gets pulled or torn. And these are the contents of the femoral triangle. All right. Let's see here. <clears throat> the next question tells you about a defect, what is def what is a striking thing that you can identify? I can see that all those you know, derivatives from the second arch or the, the first arch, sorry, is missing, right? You can see the mandiban. There is micrognathia. The ear defect, that is also a problem. And you can also see here, you can also see there is coloboma of the lower eyelid. Okay, then you can also see the maxilla is hypoplastic. It is very narrow also, right? It is also narrow, narrow and hypoplastic maxilla you can see. And you can also see that there is microtonia and macrostomia. So this mouth is too wide it is macrostomia 
That is one more thing to notice. And you can also see there is mandible hypoplasia. Small mandible. And you can also see there is um, the center portion that is symphysis menti is absolutely just does not exist. That means what probably there is very little mandible tissue present there and absolutely no fusion also. There could be a cleft as well. So this is what you can see. And even in the three-dimensional computed tomography also you can see in the scan also you can identify all those that, you know, formed from the first arch are defective. So in other words, you can remember creature Collins syndrome, okay, presents severe defect in the first arch derivative. So all those things that are derived from the first arch, they're all defective. So you can see there is zygomatic bone is absent. This is also absent. And you can see the, you know, there is defect in this bone and there is defect in this bone and there is also orbital floor. This portion is also defective. So all that you can better observe in this 3D, right? So ramus, all the things. Now here ramus is also defective. Okay, so all this leads to a defective entire lower portion of the head. So this is just fine. So upper portion is fine. All the lower portion is defective. All right. So let's see what else we have. The treacher Collins syndrome. It is also called mandibulofacial dystosis. It's a complex congenital craniofacial defect. Okay. It strikingly involves the middle and lower third of the face. I told you this is fine. Only the lower third of the face it involves. And it is transmitted by, is it a autosomal dominant or a recessive? It is a dominant one. So it is an autosomal dominant one and it could be transferred from one generation to another generation. So it is a phenotype variant and you can also see there is again transferred from one generation to another generation. And there is a reason for this. It could be because of advanced paternal age. So that can also be resulting in defective chromosomes and also the genetic anomalies can bilateral defects it can cause in those structures that are derived from the first arch. Like I said, the first arch syndrome is Treacher Collins. It can also involve the second arch. That is more, some more facial defects. Next, there is more, sim, more characteristics. You can see eyelids, how do they look like, orbital floor, how they look like, and my malar bone, that is the maxilla, and uh, absence of the zygomatic arch is noticeable. And you can also see the maxilla is high and narrow palate, you can see, and mandible is hypoplastic that you can notice. And nose, because of all the other structures are showing hypoplasia, the nose looks like as if it is protruded and projected. So nose is very, very prominent. Okay, then there are other symptoms and characteristics like the microtia, the ear deformities you can see. And there is complete absence of external acoustic meatus. And you can also see macrostomia, big mouth you can identify. And there is also other pharyngeal defects which you can't see from outside. All right, so let's see what other defects we can identify. So other than that, there could be defects in the upper lip also, right? So what is the development of the upper lip first of all? So the face itself develops from five processes. You have to remember there is a frontonasal process. There is a maxillary process here. There is a mandibular process. And there are two processes. One is medial nasal, lateral nasal. Okay, what does medial nasal give rise to? The medial nasal give rise to middle portion of the nose, mid portion of the nose and also to the philtrum. So the philtrum is what is going to continue as the upper lip. So upper lip and philtrum, they are derived from the same portion. So that is the medial nasal process. So any defect in the upper lip is because of non-fusion of medial nasal process with the maxillary process. 
So you can see the green thing is maxillary and the blue one is the medial nasal process. So you can imagine it is not the lateral one. It is the philtrum that is defective. So philtrum is formed by the medial nasal process. All right. So now here, the next one. The next one is showing some very, 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 you know, prominent defect in the face. What is it? There is no straight line. It is an oblique line. So oblique line you can see. And the oblique line extends from the angle of the mouth up to the medial angle of the eye. And this is called oblique facial cleft. So this is one classic, you know, um, picture where you can see the prominent cleft you can see. And here exactly what you can identify is the nasolacrimal duct. So if there is a such abnormality, oblique facial cleft, then it results in absence of the nasolacrimal duct. So whatever tears is produced, it just flows out through the eye. Okay, so it is always associated with the cleft palate. So you can also see there is cleft palate. Okay, so now there are so many defects in the face. So this is one of the rarest things though. You can also see there are some defects like proboscis, cyclops. All these things can be there but this is not that common. Next one. Second pharyngeal arch. What is second pharyngeal arch known as? Second pharyngeal arch is also called the hyoid arch. You must have heard of the mandibular arch. That is the first one. The second one does not have a name correlating with the structures derived, but it is called the hyoid arch. But what are the structures that is derived from this? The main thing is all those that are present in the face, like the facial muscles. So you can see it supplies all those muscles in the face. The facial nerve is a nerve of this arch and also stepedial artery. So that indicates that the stapes is from the second arch. Then styloid process, stylohyoid ligament, and lesser cornua and upper part of the hyoid bone. So these are some of the derivatives of the second arch. You can see so many structures are derived from this arch. What is the name of this cartilage which gives rise to all these structures? It's called the Richards cartilage. Okay. So this is the first one, Meckel's cartilage, first arch. And this is called the second one. This is the second arch cartilage. You can see staves. You can see, you can see the Richards cartilage. You can see lesser cornua and also upper part of the body is derived from there. So the lower part of the hyoid bone is derived from the third arch. So keep all this in mind. And you can also see the next slide coming up that tells you there is a intervertebral disc having two parts. Now there is outer rim called the annulus fibrosis and the inner jelly-like substance called nucleus pulposus. Now what is this nucleus pulposus derived of or from where is it derived or is it a remnant of what? Now degenerate and appears the notochord actually degenerates and appears as the body of the vertebrae. So now here you can see there is a small thing that still persists and represents the notochord and that is called the nucleus pulposus. So that is present in each and every intervertebral disc and it is supposed to be the remnant of the notochord. There are various remnants but this is one of the remnant of notochord. So now it can also give rise to all those tumors called the chondromos. All right. So let's see some more of them. We have a picture which shows you the anatomical relationship of the larynx. You can see the larynx has a different color here. There is epiglottis. You can also see the soft palate here. Soft palate actually has five muscles. Which are the five muscles? There is palatoglossus, 
right? There is the paleto glosses, then there is stylo glosses, and there is tensor valley palatini, there is levator valley palatini, there is musculus uvulae. All these are the muscles of the soft palate. So now these palatoglosses and palatopharynges. Palatoglosses. Okay, there is my um, list. One, two, three, four, five. So all these are derived. All these are derived from the arches. That is from the third arch. Okay, these are from the third arch. Soft palate derivatives. And here there is one muscle that is not supplied by the pharyngeal plexus. And that is called tensor valley palatini. Okay, tensor valley palatini is a complete... You know, um, it is having a different nerve supply that is supplied by nerve to medial pterygoid. Whereas all others have the pharyngeal plexus supplying them. So keep that in mind. All other muscles are supplied by pharyngeal plexus except one, the tensor valley palatini, which is supplied by nerve to medial pterygoid, which is a branch from the mandibular nerve. Okay, let's move on to the next one and see what we have. We have ring case edema. What is this ring case edema? It is also called the smoker's larynx. Okay, whenever there is, you know, um, inflammation and swelling in the larynx, it could be because of the mucous membrane that has been inflamed or abused. So here you can see the mucous membrane is swollen and there is edematous tissue collection that is extracellular fluid collection and the fluid collection is so much that it is, looks swollen and there is also a lot of room there that is the reason there is collection of the fluid and since there is so much of space within the swelling also does not lead to any pain so that's why it is painless. It does not lead to any pain and the person may not even know that he has this kind of edema and it is called ring case edema. So it can also change the way the person's voice also can change and also because of the poor lymphatic drainage, it can edema can persist for a longer time. And this is paralysis of the laryngeal muscles. So there is this Recurrent laryngeal nerve can get paralyzed and there is also the superior laryngeal nerve can also be paralyzed. So what happens when there is a recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis? Because it supplies all muscles except one muscle that is cricothyroid. But remember, it supplies the abductor. What is the abductor? It is posterior cricoarytenoid. It supplies that. But according to the Simmons law, the abductors are the first one to be paralyzed than the adductors. So remember, the adductor is all other muscles and abductor is only one. That is posterior cricoarytenoid. So whenever there is a damage to recurrent laryngeal nerve, all other adductors could be just fine because the abductor is the first one to get paralyzed. That is posterior cricoarytenoid. And you also have this another um, combination where the both of them, the recurrent laryngeal as well as the superior laryngeal, both of them could be paralyzed. In that case, the vocal cord takes up the paramedian position and then it stays in the center. And you can see that it could be a cadaveric position without any movement of the vocal cords. Okay, that's one thing. And in case only superior laryngeal nerve is paralyzed, then it results in weaker voice and also the aspiration. But in case of recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis, there could also be a lot of strider and wheezing sounds. Okay, so now this is another one where we are going to talk about the pharyngeal muscles. 
So here you can see the superior constrictor, the middle constrictor and this inferior constrictor. This is part of the inferior constrictor. This is also inferior constrictor. This is the part thyropharyngeus and this part is called cricopharyngeus. And in between that, it leaves a gap that is called Killian's dehiscence. What is Killian's dehiscence? Killian's dehiscence is the gap between the thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus. And this gap can be really, really troublesome because through this gap, the mucosal lining could protrude out like a teardrop. And that is known as Danker's diverticulum or gateway of tears. gateway of tears. So remember this, it happens in which one? It happens in the inferior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. So superior is only one origin. The middle is also only single origin. It's only the inferior constrictor which has two origins. That's the reason it leaves a gap and that is called Zenker's diverticulum or gateway of tears. So it's a very important thing to notice. And in the center, both of them, the right side and the left side constrictors, they form a median raphe and that is called the raphe of the constrictors. Pharyngeal raphe. All right. So now here there is another important thing to notice. Waldair's ring. What is Waldair's ring? This is a lymphoid aggregation in the oral cavity as well as the the nasal cavity. Now here there are four things. One, two in the nasal cavity, two in the oral cavity. So these are called the inner Waldair ring. So why it is called inner? Because that does not involve the cervical lymph nodes. If the cervical lymph nodes are present, it would be called outer ring of lymphoid follicles. So here there is, if you want to, um, anti do the antigen sampling, then it could be, you know, sampled from the inspired air and that is trapped by the adenoids and the tubal tonsils. And if you want to sample from the oral cavity, ingested antigen, then it could be from the palatine and lingual tonsils. So this is the thing, nasopharyngeal tonsil, tubal tonsil, palatine tonsil and lingual tonsil. So these are some of the Tonsils. And you can also see mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. All over the mucosal lining of the body, you can see them. All right, next coming to an important, um, you know, structure that is called the tonsil. Now, what is the histology of tonsil? Histology of tonsil is just like the oral cavity. What is the lining of the oral cavity? You have stratified squamous, non keratinized epithelium. So even this has the same epithelium. It is non-keratinized. If it was keratinized, it would have been the skin, hair or nails, right? It is non-keratinized. So it is a complete, it starts with the oral cavity and it goes on till the esophagus. Even the esophagus has the same epithelium. So in this one, what you need to remember is the branches of the facial artery are entering from the lateral aspect. Okay, lateral surface. This is the medial surface. That is the lateral surface. It's very important you know this lateral surface you know, structures. One is the tonsillar branches coming from the facial artery. Very, very important. Because these tonsillar branches are very important and they are part of the tonsillar bed. All right. So now here, whenever there is a tonsillectomy, what is the nerve that could, you know, um, bleed a lot? That is peritonsillar veins. Peritonsillar veins are the ones which could bleed profusely in case of tonsillectomy. So now that is what is supplying from the inferior and lateral aspect. So you can see them, peri and paratonsillar veins here. So these are the ones which could be 
easily damaged in the tonsillic because they have to scoop it out. And when they scoop it out, it could also damage the structures in the pet. So this is one, um, you know, x-ray where you can see various structures. You can see the epiglottis, you can see, you can see the tongue. And you can also see the impacted tooth. You can see the maxillary sinus and orbit. Of course, you can see the pituitary fossa. You can see mastoid air cells. You can also identify other spinal, spinous processes. And all that is fine. You can also see the inlet of larynx and esophagus. These are the things that you can notice here. The important thing is the tonsil that you can notice on either side of the tongue. In this case, it is big and edematous. It is swollen definitely. So it is like kissing tonsils. Okay, you can also see here the tonsils. It's quite big here. And it can also press upon the structures that are surrounding it, including those glands like the submandibular and sublingual glands as well. So that big it can grow up to. You can also see airy epiglottic folds and trachea has air, a lot of air within and that also you can notice. And you can also see part of the esophagus here and all these are the cervical vertebrae. You can see the very prominent vertebra prominence. Right. This is the diffuse. This is the sternal angle. All right. So I could notice all these important structures in the X-ray. So this is another picture where you can identify facial artery in the bed for. Palatine tonsil bed or tonsillar bed, you can call them. So you would remember this as PBSS PB. What is PB? Pharyngo basilar fascia. SS is the muscles, these muscles, and BB is the buccopharyngeal fascia. So this. Fascia is here. In between that, you can also see the superior constrictor muscle. So that also forms one of the S. So you have superior constrictor and the muscle that is um, in this region. You can see the, let me see where is the other muscle. You can see definitely you can identify the stylo-glossus, stylo-hyoid. All these are the tonsillar bed forming structures. All right. So with all these things, we have almost reached the end. This would be the last slide that I would be addressing. So here you have those lateral rotators of the hip joint. You can also see so many muscles that are at the back. What are these? These are called the muscles of the back. These are all the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall I would say posterior abdominal wall has the psoas muscles and it also has the quadratus lumborum muscle. So this is what is present in the posterior abdominal wall. So there you can see the psoas major and it passes through this small gap and then it goes and attaches itself to a small you know, projection that is called the Lester trochanter. This is the Lester trochanter. Okay. So whenever there is an inflammation of the appendix that is called appendicitis, it can elicit pain and that is called the psoas pain. And here in this region, you can see the gluteus medius, you can see gluteus minimus, what is removed is the maximus. The maximus is very thick one and that is, is removed from there. 
so that you can see all other structures. So these are the structures under the cover of gluteus maximus. So once you remove the gluteus maximus, you can see all other structures. And you must remember there is a nerve that passes between these two muscles that is called superior gluteal nerve. So it also supplies these two muscles. Superior gluteal supplies the gluteus medius and the minimus. The inferior gluteal nerve supplies the gluteus maximus. So keep this in mind. All right. So with all these things, we have almost reached the end and one last thing that I would suggest you to remember uh, is all these whatever you can see the externus, obturator externus, obturator internus, the gamelae that is superior and the inferior gamelae and you can also see the pyriformis. What are these? These are all the lateral rotators of the hip joint. Very, very important. There are six of them. Remember all of them. The pyriformis is one of them because that can result in a condition called pyriformis syndrome, which imitates the similar condition like the sciatica. Okay, so it results in the sciatica when this pyriformis muscle presses upon the nerve, it can result in pain along radiating from the back of the back of your body up to the sole of the foot. So that is called sciatica. It can either come from the muscle pressing on the nerve or it could be because of the herniated disc pressing on the root. So these are the two, you know, um, conditions where the nerve could be irritated. So remember this, with this note, myself, Dr. Rohini Wain, I would like to thank you all for attending this. And also, please look forward for my classes on, you know, um, not 19th, it is from the Saturday. All right, Saturday, I think it is the 21st, 08, 21. We are going to have a whole lot of classes. It starts from the 21st and we are going to start with the nerves. So I'm going to start with head to toe nerves. All the nerves I'm going to conclude in that. And then there is again histological class, histology classes where we are going to discuss all those histology things. Then we have the embryology, then all the joints in one class and then the brains, blood supply of the brain, then functional areas. Then we have MCQs and also image based learning more of that. And why not grand MCQs we have. So all this is definitely going to make you really, really smart. So with the anatomy subject. So go and please subscribe for the plus classes. And it starts on 21st 08 21. So with all this note, myself, Dr. Roini Wayan would like to sign off and you all have a good night.